Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we've got a pretty cool pair here. A pair of suede Carmina shoes that we're going to be resoling. Yeah, I know they've got plenty of wear, but the gentleman who owns these, good friend of ours, and uh, wants these upgraded. So, we're going to tear everything off and put something a little bit better on there for him. And uh, we're not quite sure which option he wants to go with yet, but we're going to let him decide once we've got the sole off, send some pictures to him. So I'm not going to quite uh, mention it yet. So join us, check it out, and see what we're doing. All right, everyone, so we've got the soles off and cleaned up on the inside at least a little bit with some of that cork removed. I've gone ahead and sanded up a little bit to remove some of that old glue. Now I'm just gonna pull out the stitches. I already did the other one here, but uh, stitches I'm gonna have to do by hand because the type of welt it is and I don't wanna mess anything up. And the stitch puller that we usually use we save for certain types of boots and shoes a lot of times, but it's something a little bit on the nicer build as far as more delicate well, in other words, I prefer to do it by hand. So it's different. So, so far with these shoes, I do like the construction definitely. It's got its pluses and minuses obviously always, but I definitely like uh, how well it's stitched, at least the sole to the welt and how everything's put together. I'm not a big fan of these soles here. Um, we were debating before we took the sole off to see if they might be like a variant of Day Night and just has the Carmina logo on it right here. But they're definitely not a Day Night. That's for sure. I mean, it looks like it. Appearance wise, it's got the little pegs, the design of it, and stuff, but it's definitely not a Day Night for sure. So. Just wanted to kind of point that out. It, it's a bit on the softer side for sure. That's why I was having a lot of issues pulling off the heel base. The adhesive that they use is very good. And on top of that, the rubber sole is extremely stretchy. So not, uh, not an easy thing to do when you've got a good adhesive 
and a stretchy rubber sole put together in other words they did use a leather midsole which is definitely a good th or yeah leather midsole so that's definitely a good plus there um, this section here so a lot of times we'll remove this if we have to uh, do like a bath or anything, anything like that but we're gonna avoid doing a bath on these because they're still in great shape there's not much of anything that needs to be done we'll do a light cleaning over top and get them waterproofed up for this gentleman here and uh, yeah so for the moment I'm gonna go through this slow process of picking all the stitches then I'll go ahead and add in the cork now the cork just needs to be filled in at the ball of the foot it usually doesn't really need to go in the back area here because you can see there's not even much room for me to try to stuff cork in there first off but second off um, the cork is designed to be kind of like a filling agent is the most important thing that it's used for for this cavity here but uh, this shank here does majority of that for us and fills it in it kind of helps distribute the pressure that the foot is applying in here and if the shank wasn't in here and it was a different one say a steel one or a wooden one then we would have to definitely put some cork in there to make sure that the pressure of the foot is distributed more evenly but it's one of those things where if I if I have to I would definitely add the cork but it's gonna be a little more problematic trying to shove cork in there and it could cause more discomfort down the road and everything so we're gonna leave it like they have from the factory which is just fine as well and then yeah, the other thing with the bath too because this is a fiberboard material so almost like a cardboard if we did the bath with this still in here it would just kind of fall apart on on us and we don't want that to happen and also pulling this thing out this thing's gonna rip in chunks so if it was damaged i would definitely have to pull it out but trying to save original parts from the shoe that will affect the comfort level of the shoe is not always the best thing to do we try to save as many of the original parts as possible but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this and get that cork filled in and we'll see you back here in just a little bit all right everyone so we've got everything filled in with the cork here and uh all glued up right now i'm about to stick on the midsole so the reason why i'm putting on a leather midsole is this gentleman actually likes the stiffness of uh, a bit of a stiffer sole in other words and we are going to go ahead and use the um jr graffiti sole here for him but he also wants a leather midsole to help add a little bit of that stiffness to the shoe as well Ooh, this is really warm so i'm using a midsole now a lot of times you don't really need a midsole necessarily just because again leather sole is usually pretty stiff already but uh, he did request this so we'll go ahead and do that for him around this area right where that arch kind of sticks out here a little bit higher we have to make sure that's nicely hammered out because it's slightly rounded gives it that nice appearance um, called a it's almost like a fiddle back waist but not quite that intense or anything it's very low profile on this one but while this sole is hot i'm gonna go ahead and stick this on the press press out the welt area here and uh yeah let it cure overnight and then well actually i, I can get the soles on them tonight so that they all cure out one so that tomorrow morning i could actually go ahead and get everything trimmed out and start stitching and all that but let's run over to the uh presses room all right so we're over at the presses i'm gonna go ahead and push Everything, well, press everything out quickly. Okay. So I'm pressing out a section at a time so that any air pockets end up coming out, in other words. It makes it a little bit better so that uh, when I start at the heel, I press it down first with just the way it is. Then I add this little wedge in here and it gets right under that contour nicely, right where the arch is. And then I switch it over to the foot press and it presses out this small section. And then finally, finish off at the toes there. Now, most uh, air pockets or bubbles will end up disappearing and everything, but 
I still like this press anyways, especially because it presses downward. Most cobbler shops, their presses, they have the sole facing upward and it pushes down. Certain adhesives, unfortunately, when we have to use them, they, they can leak out to the side of the shoe and that's that's bad, really bad. Where ours, on the other hand, does the opposite. And you can see that's why some of my padding here is kind of worn out and everything. It's from the adhesives and stuff going down onto the pad and the sole that gets trimmed out anyways instead of damaging the upper. So let's go ahead and switch over to the welt press. All right, so we're over at our five and one now and we're gonna go ahead and use this section that presses out the welt. I'm showing it from a different angle. And excuse the really messy table that this thing's on. We had a big project that we just uh, got finished up with and we've been so exhausted and backed up with other work that we had to leave it for the moment because this workbench we don't at the moment use too often, at least right now. And I think tomorrow I have to make sure that this is cleaned up. Janelle has to help me with that. So excuse the mess, but let's go ahead and show you how that works. So I got it pressed down here. Sure enough, knock stuff over. My elbow's sticking out too much. All right, so get all that pressed out nicely. I guess I really need to make sure this table's cleaned up. And there we go. So everything is nicely pressed. I'll go ahead and show you guys the cutter real quick. Leather, thankfully, we don't need it to cure that long before we use the cutter. It's usually when we start using rubbers because they have a tendency to stretch where leather doesn't really stretch in that kind of manner. Exactly, it stretches, but over a period of time, not immediately like rubber would. Right under this arch area, squeeze down the shoe so I don't cut the uppers. And this only gets it close enough to the welt. We're not getting right up against the welt with this cutter because unfortunately you take a little bit of the wrong angle and you'll accidentally make the sole beveled inward and you don't want that. You want it to be as straight as possible but one little mishap or something, it's always better just to leave tiny bit behind at least so there we go this one's all ready it's gonna dry for a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the edges so that it's nice and even sorry got interrupted there but anyways we're gonna go ahead and rough this up so that it adheres a little bit better and uh, rough up the sole as well and uh, start getting ready to stick it all together so let's continue on All right, everyone. So we're actually behind our machines right now. I'm kind of show you where we're at. So this is where the sanders are and everything, and the trimmers. But I just wanted to show. We have this little machine. This is actually an industrial um, channeler here because it's got a different type of stopper and everything on it. And I just wanted to show you guys. This is what we're actually going to be using on these shoes because the channeler that I have on our machine that's built on there is nice because it spins faster and the blade on it is a little easier to work with um, but because we're not redoing the finish on the bottom of these shoes or anything we're just going to put like a neutral coating on it um, obviously you saw me trim those up and I did do that off camera there for the heel bases I'm gonna have to use this machine here because it 
only just the blade here spins and it's got a guide here where on the machine that particular attachment the guide spins along with the blade together and it has a tendency to burn the leather a little more than I'd like it to so this is a little bit of a safer bit. I don't use it as often because I can't find replacement blades for this. I have tried and tried. Um, I may have to get some machined out or something at some point, but for the moment, I just save this for very particular shoes and everything. Otherwise, it just kind of sits back here and stuff. So let me uh, set up the camera real quick because I'm actually just holding it right now. And then that way you can see the process of it. All right. I hope this angle is good for everyone there, but... Go ahead and spray this down because this thing does get hot, especially with JR soles. They are really tough. So I'm going to have to be spraying this down significantly quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get things going then. So we got it all channeled out. I did sand up the edges just a little bit and put an edge ink so that we can darken up the very edge here. Gives a little bit of a class, I guess. But uh, one thing, unfortunately, with uh, channeling, sometimes what happens is the very corner of the edge right there kind of uh, rolls upward. And a lot of times we're able to hammer it out or sand it out. I don't like hammering it out too much because then it folds inward and kind of covers up the stitching. And I want to try to kind of avoid that. But um, these ones, obviously, because they're more finished out, we want to leave them be. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've got this little skiving tool here that just kind of skives the corners a little bit. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and skive that up. Just go around a little. Makes it, makes it more finished, in other words. Small little detail like that. And it keeps it from being a sharp corner, too. dust now we're going to take our Saphir beauty cure neutral it's going to help kind of seal things up here nicely protects it a little bit better too also once we start getting into more of the edge ink and all that it's a lot easier to clean up after this is on here because it does create a little bit of a wax barrier because there is some waxes in this cream polish here and if you're wondering, well, why aren't you using the Medal Dior? Well, this is going on to a soul. The Medal Dior is intended for the uppers, okay? The Medal Dior is the higher grade version and stuff. And this stuff is already treated. We're just needing to apply a finish. This isn't going to absorb it into the leather deep or anything like that. Just kind of settles over top. There we go. Alright, and I can't scrub too hard otherwise some of that green will come out because there is pine-based turpentine in here and that is a solvent so it's going to remove some of that green. And I don't know if you guys have noticed but they are different obviously because these are graffiti, they're kind of random and stuff like double printed, single printed and stuff. They're just all over the place. That's kind of the thing about these particular soles that 
that's just the way they are so if you're wanting them to be perfect maybe this soul isn't for you you want a little bit of uh ability to accept the fact that it's going to be abnormal and unique and everything so i'm going to go buff these up real quick and uh buff up the edges a little bit more and then we're going to move on to the stitching now we do have to take care of this before the stitching just because it makes it a little bit easier during the stitching process and stuff and we don't get any of the ink directly onto the stitches as well so let me go take care of that real quick everyone so i've got the heel bases on and everything now i did check for the height and all that because the heels that we're using they're the jr vibram combination heels for these they are a little bit on the thicker side so i do have to adjust the height by removing one layer of the heel base here which is very common especially like when we're switching a, a leather sole shoe to for example day night the day night heels are very thick and most of the jr sole uh, uh, jr heels are also on the thicker side like the dovetail and the uh, vibram jr combination as well so we have to make sure that we adjust for the height otherwise it's going to feel like you're on a you know platform or a high heeled shoe in other words but at this point we're gonna go ahead and put the nails back in or not back in but new ones and uh, we're gonna aim for those same holes there now sometimes I'll go over to our heel wheel and do it that way but since this is a shoe that's open it's a little bit easier for me let me see if I could turn this for you guys to be able to see let's see Okay. Sorry, I got a little interrupted there, but yeah, so for the moment, what I'm doing is just nailing in, following the original holes in here a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hammer all the way in. Grab my little hammer here. So this guy here is an option too. Some uh, some cobblers have longer ones, but Mine, unfortunately, is not too long to be able to just hit it. And the other thing is I'm always concerned about hitting the side here. And, uh, yeah, so I try to get the heads in at least a little bit first beforehand. And then from there, I'm able to grab a punch and just hammer it the rest of the way in. So you can't get enough of a swing to just really get it in there. Even with this hammer. See, they're all sticking up still. But I like doing it like this, honestly. It's a little more, feels like it's more finished in other words for me. But sometimes we have no choice and I have to use like the heel wheel or something. Surprisingly though, here in Colorado, most of the other shops that I've come across, and I've worked at a few of them also, they actually don't run nails in like this, not just by hand, uh, but even with the heel wheel, into the 
boots and shoes, which is ridiculous, especially with like Western boots. You've seen a number of my videos if you've been part of the channel for a while. I do a fair amount of Western boots as well. But some cobbler shops, or most of them here, what they actually do is they use wires. They, we have a, what's called an auto solar. You've seen me maybe use it before if you've, again, watched a number of my videos. But it runs little wires in through this side, which, granted, yeah, you can, you can technically do that, but it's not as strong as having nails going all the way through like they have from the factory here. And I always prefer that kind of build where... That's one thing I do like about these shoes, that they actually do the nails in from the inside. I prefer that much more. It's more secure versus what Allen Edmonds does, for example, and a number of other brands, too. This is a heel base of theirs, and they run the nails through the top. So the rest of the shoe sits on top, and you got these nails that go into the leather. And to me, just it's not the preferred method. It's not the way I like to do it, necessarily. So... But, hey, we try to restore it as original as possible as well. And plus, these ones do have a three-quarter length insole that goes to them anyway. So it kind of helps cover up the nails nicely. But that's what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all shaved up and clean off all the old glues and stuff. And uh, start gluing the heels on. And we're almost done. All right, everyone. So I've got the heels on there and everything. And my battery unfortunately died, so I wasn't able to get the majority of that, but got the edges kind of finished out, got some green on there. You know, do some final touches, got some green into that Vibram there. Be great if I can get into that JR logo, but it's just not deep enough, unfortunately, on the heels uh, to be able to get some green in there and then have it look like the logo and the JR uh, letters, in other words. But at the moment, I'm putting in the nails here on the sides. I'm using one of these compass tools here to mark out where I'm placing them and uh, punched them with a all like that there and just uh, hammering some nails in. So just about done with it. Need to do some final touches on, on the bottoms and then do the edging. Nothing too fancy, but uh, definitely come along. Oh yeah, and I got the insole, at least on this one, glued in the other one I've got right here and stuff. Still got to clean that one up a little bit too. But the final stage, obviously because these are suede, the most important thing is going to be waterproofing. Make sure you waterproof all your suedes. All right, everyone. So got the nails in. Gone ahead and taken care of the edges on here as well. Coming out pretty nicely. I like it. Should do me a pair like this, actually. I got a pair of Carmina Shell Cordovan ankle high boots, but I may have to get rid of them. They're a little bit too tight in the toe area for me, unfortunately, and I just I can't wear them. But these things, I definitely love them. Well worth it for the price that they are. Phenomenal. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take care of the uppers. So what I'm going to use is the Saphir Ren uh, Renovatoire suede spray this is the neutral colored you could also use like a medium brown dark brown black and you know, whatever color you might need but the color is fine on this this is just to condition it because this does have some almond oil in it it's the only spray or only conditioner out there that's dedicated for suedes and new bucks so i highly recommend it obviously it's going to go on dark like that as you can see and you don't need too much no hefty crazy coats just Nice light spray all around. But definitely do it in a well ventilated area or outside. Probably should have uh, put on a mask, but I can't talk with my mask. But you can see it's already starting to lighten up in some of these areas and stuff. Just give it a minute to soak in nicely. You can also use a bit of a suede brush to bring up some of the nap if you need to as well. I usually don't recommend using too much of the brush after spraying it. It's just very lightly and stuff. Use the suede brush beforehand to remove any dust or debris, uh, which we have done a number of times because we were using compressors. We had to get dust off of it and everything. Um, just because if you do that uh, with the brushes, it kind of leaves some streaks in there. I'll show you real quick. Well, might not even be too visible there, but as you can see, it's starting to lighten up everywhere. Give it a few more minutes there. After it lightens up and is dried up nicely, let's see. Okay, also 
little spot that was bothering me. Definitely want to waterproof it. Waterproofers, there's a few different types that we use. Um, our main two that we use. Hang on, let me finish spraying this one so it dries. Our main two that we use is going to be the Tarago uh, Nano. You can see the difference already between the two. Is the camera even showing that? Yeah, it is. There, there you go. One's lighter, one's darker, and it's going to lighten up after a few minutes. The one that we use mainly is the Tarago Nano, just because it's a bit of a stronger one. Um, it settles over top of the material and basically creates a barrier. The other one, and this is mostly for nice dress shoes and casual shoes like this one here, I prefer the Super and Volner by Saphir from the Medal Dior line um, because this will actually absorb into the leather and make the leather a little more waterproof. It's kind of a different concept between the two. Tarago creates a barrier, this one makes it waterproof. And we say waterproof, obviously, but it's more of a water resistant. I've had people actually ask me thinking, oh, so if I spray this stuff on my boots, I can go hiking and I'm not going to get my feet wet. No, your feet are going to get drenched. They're going to get soaked. The sprays and uh, creams and conditioners that have a waterproofing agent in them are strictly dedicated to waterproofing the material. That's it. It's not going to make the shoe all 100% waterproof so that your feet don't get soaked it's it, that's not how it works it just doesn't okay i don't even know how how somebody would think that unfortunately but it it is true um you know the material gets damaged even if you have some heavy work boots hiking boots that you don't really care about you still want to waterproof them uh even if they're going to get dirty and stuff it's just to help so that the material doesn't get damaged over extended use in harsh com conditions you know climates and everything like that so Definitely highly recommend it even on your work boots or your hiking boots as well. And this same thing, spray it on nicely. We have ventilation systems in here. I should probably go turn one on and the fans. Doing that. Anyways, um, with the Carminas, as you can tell, it's, it's a well-built shoe. For the price point, they are phenomenal. I highly recommend them. Um, they're not as huge as say like Allen Edmond or Alden or anything like that. Um, price point is definitely a little bit, you know, more flexible compared to some of the shoes where they're hitting over a thousand dollars. But for the price, I love these shoes. I highly recommend them. Um, you know, obviously it's not going to be a twelve or thirteen hundred dollar shoe until you start getting into their shell cordovan line and boots and stuff like that. But for a shoe at, at this price, very well designed and built. And I don't know, there's something about them that I just really like. I think it, this one especially, I like the plain look. I'm not crazy into a bunch of broguing and you know too much stitching, cap toe. This one just looks almost like a whole cut, and I kind of like it without being a whole cut. Still has just enough detail. It looks great, in my opinion. Some guys like the broguing. Some guys uh, prefer if they get a whole cut, they get an actual whole cut. So, but I'll have a link in the description for the Carminas. Uh, if you want to get yourself a pair, I highly recommend clicking that link. At least it helps us. Uh, there's no uh, no charges to you or anything like that, but they end up giving us a small percentage when you end up buying a pair or something from Carmina using our link below. That way it helps with our channel. Maybe I'll get more cameras down the road. Finally upgrade my laptop so that I can do videos a little more frequently and efficiently and uh, probably do more giveaways and stuff, you know? So. Definitely hit that link if you want to get yourself a pair. Um, otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. If it's a short comment, please. If it's a longer question that you have about anything like that, um, I'd probably respond a little bit quicker through our Instagram page, uh, Cobblers Plus CO, or on Facebook, Cobblers Plus. So also make sure to follow us on there. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, let's take some photos of them, and we'll see you next time.